there, everybody. Welcome to Shady Entertainment. <laughs> what you guys don't, may not know about me is that for some reason, every time before I'm about to make a video, I, I feel like it's necessary. I don't know what it is. I don't even do it consciously. I just go in the washroom and I just I spritz her myself with, with some cologne. And I just catch myself doing it. And I'm like, what the hell am I doing? This is YouTube. This isn't, this isn't smell of vision <laughs> It's not like you guys are gonna s smell me at all. Why the hell do I keep doing that? It's like, it's like a habit. And I do it too, like all feminine, just tss, yeah. tss, ah. <laughs> It's a weird habit I've gotten into. But just rest assured, guys, that now you know that uh, <laughs> Shaney Entertaining <laughs> smells lovely. <laughs> Shaney L number five. All right, guys, let's get to this. Sorry guys, I, I've been away for a week or so. There's, there's been, you know, some health related issues due to some, you know, some flu or whatnot. And um, I've been working hard on the reboot and a few other projects that I've been uh, working on. And so like a lot of stuff is taking a lot longer time than I thought it was going to take. So bear with me guys. I'm telling you, you're going to get something good coming once you're, once it's done. Anyway, so today I, I started, like I, you know, like I usually do, you, you get up and you check on some news and whatever. And oh my God, every single time it just gets you. It's just Every time you think you've, you're just, you're done with it, you, 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 you say, whatever, I don't need to hear anymore, they <laughs> pull you right back in. I was watching a YouTube channel uh, by the name of Mike Zero, check him out, uh, he's pretty good. Um, maybe I'll leave a comp, maybe I'll leave a link in the bottom for you, whatever. He was talking about an interview that Mark Hamill had, that, he had, that someone had with Mark Hamill, and I was listening to uh, the, the interview and him talking about when he first read the script, wasn't feeling it, it didn't feel right to him, it didn't feel like Luke Skywalker, which we already knew, that's not new stuff. And then he obviously, like, he, he said he was going to roll with the punches because he's a professional actor and, you know, he likes the challenge and all that stuff, which we already knew. This isn't all new, this isn't new stuff. The stuff that kind of got me, though, was that Mark Hamill then proceeded at some point when to the lovely Ryan Johnson and ask him, you know, Luke Skywalker goes to Ryan Johnson and asks him, please just don't kill my character. Can you just not kill my character in this episode, please? And Ryan Johnson goes, yeah, letting Luke live doesn't feel right. You know, it feels, it feels right to kill him. It feels right to kill him. I don't know. This just, you know when I tell you about the bells ringing? And it just, and, and you, you know, your, your foot shakes and you just, <laughs> Where's that camera? <laughs> Getting angry, right? And you're like, okay. Why this bothers me so much is there was no need to kill him. It's not like it's relevant to the plot. It's not like he's gonna make the sequel and he has plans for Luke's ghost or something going forward. Nothing, there was not even a real motive for him to die. He just vanishes into thin air at the end because what? I don't know, he used too much force. It was a stupid ending, it was a stupid death, and, and he thinks it was a good one, it was a respectable one. He died on his own terms. It doesn't matter, right? Look, Mark Hamill was just, please, don't kill him yet. Could you just give him one more? Just give him one more, please? Nah, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> like, really, guy? Really? I really don't like this guy. Like, listen, Shaney is a nice boy. I love people. There's very few people in this world that I say I don't like. I usually like most people. You know, I'm not a hateful person. But man, this guy gets under my skin in a way that I just, I can't stand. And I don't even know the guy personally. It doesn't even matter. But you can sort of tell that he's the type of person that's like some, that, that he enjoys watching. It, it feels this way. Like, I might be wrong, okay? I'm sorry if I'm wrong, if he's the most loving individual in the world and I'm completely off, I'm sorry. But this is how I perceive this guy. That he, he's just this, this type of person that just, feeds. He feeds off of other people's like anger. They call them spiritual vampires where they just suck up your energy. They love to see you squirm. They, you know, they're trolls living underneath the bridge. Yeah! You know, they, they like to cause catastrophes like the gremlins and then, and then laugh at you. That kind of individual because there was no reason that I can see that he couldn't grant Luke's wish. It didn't change the plot in any form. To, to, to keep him alive. And he's not in charge of the next movie. All that would have done was made the fans happy. Well, screw them. <laughs> made Mark Hamill happy. Who cares about him? <laughs> he's only Star Wars. And I'm pretty sure George Lucas is there going, uh, why? Why'd you kill him? How? The more you hear from this man, and then the more you realize this guy's got still has his trilogy. I mean, if he didn't have his trilogy, guys, I think I would have been over this. If he, if I, I mean, woke up tomorrow and they said, oh, hey, Ryan Johnson, I'm sorry, but we're gonna X-nay on your illusion tray. Ha! 
oh damn, this sucks, you know, he goes home, kicks some shit, whatever. I'd be all happy with it and be like, all right, I don't have to talk about it anymore. I don't have to go on and harp on the same thing over and over again. But the fact is, he's still got his trilogy, and until this guy's trilogy is pulled, I'm, I don't care. I'm going to keep going on because this guy, I'm tired of him. I'm just, I, I, I love Star Wars, and I, I cannot take three more movies with this guy. I just can't. It's, just, it's, just, it's disgusting that, that they've still given him a trilogy after all of this. He's like a psychopath. All right, now, not to change directions, this is still kind of related, but, I mean, have you ever heard of, of the Mandela Effect? I mean, X-Files did a thing about the Mandela Effect, it's kind of popular online, and this has this whole thing about how most people believe that Nelson Mandela died in the 80s, I think they thought he died of some sickness or illness, and a lot of people remember that he died of some illness, but, you know, he's, he, was, he actually died later on, but people remember him dying in the 80s. That's where they coined the the phrase, the Mandela Effect, is basically when you remember things differently than the way history shows it to be, right? And that's not just individual. That's to be sort of a common thing that most people, like the majority or, or at least a vast amount of people, remember this this being this alternate sort of universe where they believe that Mandela died. Like, I actually do remember Mandela dying too. I was part, part of those, right? But people just say, oh, you just misremembered or you maybe you mis were misinformed or thought someone else died and it wasn't him. Whatever the fact is, some people believe it's a dimensional shift or some form of time shift, you know? Marty McFly went back to the future with, with Doc Brown, changed everything, and came back and, Whoa, this is heavy! Mandela's still alive! Great Scott! Now it relates to Star Wars, though, that there's actually a few Star Wars related Mandela effects. You know, things that people remember to be fact, but then when they go back and check what it actually is, for instance, one of these Star Wars related Mandela effects, the most important scene in Star Wars, and let's see if you guys remember it this way. So a lot of people remember this scene sounding like this. Luke, I am your father. So if you remember that in that scene, right, well you're wrong, because <laughs> that's not how it went. See, this is where people go, what? No, oh, that's, that's what he said, right? Luke, I'm your father. Everyone says that. But that is not actually what he says. If you go check, he actually says, he actually says this. No, I am your father. So that's the actual quote. No, I am your father. He doesn't actually say, Luke, I'm your father. When I heard that, I was like, what? Nah, no way. It's true, guys. It's true. Check it out. Another Mandela effect pertaining to Star Wars. This one was even bigger than that one because this one, this is like, what? No! 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 <laughs> no, 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 no! Do you guys remember C-3PO? Hello, hello, C-3PO, I'm a protocol droid. Do you remember him at all having a silver leg? I don't <laughs> recall any of that. If you go back to the first Star Wars, he has a silver leg. He does! In the New Hope, he has one silver leg. I always pictured him just a completely gold guy. I don't ever remember him having a silver leg. And when I went back and started looking, he, he does have a stupid silver leg. Even the toys don't show him with a silver leg. They even fooled Kenner. So that's a Mandela effect. That's like basically, you remember something that historical records don't, don't support. There's a whole bunch of them that don't pertain to Star Wars, like if you were to go keep on the Walt Disney theme, right? Remember this? Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fattest one of all? Right? Remember that? Well, that's not how it goes. Mm -mm. It goes, magic mirror on the wall, who's the fattest one of all? <laughs> Remember that quote by, uh, what's her name, Sally Fields? Remember that goes, you like me, you really like me. Well, that's not how that goes either. That one threw me for a loop too, and he actually says, she actually says, you like me right now, you really like me right now which doesn't flow as well as the original one that you remember. Those are Mandela effects, guys. There's tons of them in, in Hollywood. You know, there's one from Forrest Gump. You know, you know that whole, the whole saying? Life is like a box of chocolates because you never know what you're going to get. Remember that one? <laughs> he doesn't say it like that. He says, my mama always used to say that life was like a box of chocolates. What? Was like a box of I was, is, not, was, is, was, is, was. So that's, that's another Mandela effect. Check them out, they're pretty fun. Now, why am I bringing up the Mandela effect when I'm discussing Ryan Johnson? Hello! <laughs> well, my friends, because I want to coin a new term. See, that one's the Mandela effect. I want to call it Ryan Johnson effect, or the Johnson effect, or the RJ effect. I'm not sure. Well, I'm still working on the title. But basically, it's where you remember, uh, you know, a movie or a franchise being a certain way, right? 
and he comes and takes a hot shit right all over it and changes everything to suit his needs. That's the RJ effect, right? The Ryan Johnson effect. It's like where he just ignores everything that happened in the past and changes history without you even really realizing it. Here's what he did. Do you remember C-3PO used to have a red arm? Do you remember that red arm? He even mentioned it to, to R2-D2. Let me tell you about my red arm one of these days. Remember that? The last Jedi, you know, you see C-3PO no longer has the red arm. <gasps> The RJ effect. I'm telling you. Well, remember when you thought back in the day that Force Lightning could only come from a Sith and definitely not from a Force Ghost, right? Well, RJ effect changed all that. And there's a bunch of RJ effects that I believe are very comparable to the Mandela effect because I remember Star Wars being this. I don't remember ever hyperspace being able to be able to track through hyperspace. The RJ effect does. What the hell? It's like we're entering a time warp where suddenly everything is different, right? So that's the RJ effect, guys. So I'd like to hear your RJ effect. So guys, please leave in the comments your Art Ryan Johnson effects. Now, for this new generation, like I call them the Harry Potter generation, but this Harry Potter generation, you think that I'm blowing this all out of proportion. Who cares, right? Who cares what they, what they did to, to, to Star Wars, right? You don't care because, you know, you weren't raised with it. You just sort of were inherited it, right? But you didn't really, didn't really wasn't a part of you. To you guys, I say this. I, I would just like to ask, how would you feel if the Ryan Johnson effect affected your precious Harry Potter? Hmm? What if one day Mickey Mouse calls in J.K. Rowling's into his office. Take a seat! Ha ha ha! Listen here, J.K. Ha ha! And I call you J.K. It doesn't matter, I'm gonna do it anyway. Ha ha! I just got off the phone with Warner Brothers and I just bought the rights to your books! Ha ha! Okay, that's interesting. And here's the thing, we're gonna make a whole bunch more of your movies. Oh really? But well, I'm done writing books, so unfortunately, I'm not going to write anymore. Oh, we don't need you to write any more books. JK, I'd like to introduce you to Harry Potter's next writer. Hey, hey, mofo. <laughs> JK, meet RJ. <laughs> How would that make you feel? You guys, you two guys here, you communicate, you know, you know, hash things out. I'm going to go to the job or something. You two kids play nice. It's going to be a pleasure, uh, you know, not working with you. <laughs> Just a few things, Ryan Johnson. Now, Harry Potter is a very vast universe, as you know. You know, there's a lot of details. You might have to, you know, read through the lore and find out a bit more about, you know, how the magic works and what the rules are. Ha <laughs> <laughs> Screw rules! <laughs> I do what I want! Haven't you ever heard of the RJ event? <laughs> um, no? Well, I'm gonna write you a few notes. Oh, no, I don't need your notes. Ha <laughs> ha! I'm gonna make it up as I go along anyway. <laughs> um, okay, um... I'm starting to get a bad feeling about this. <laughs> then later on in interviews, you're gonna see some douchebag reporters sit there and go, Welcome to my show. <clears throat> We've got a very special guest. We've got J.K. Rowling, yeah? Uh, uh, Ryan Johnson and, 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 of course, Daniel Radcliffe. Uh, uh, on the show, and uh, please uh, t do tell me. How, what was your impression when you first read the script, Daniel Radcliffe? Well, what, what was, did you like the direction the director took? Well, at first I read the script, right, and, and it was all right. I mean, it sort of didn't feel like Harry Potter, but, you know, I guess I just sort of wanted to roll with it, I suppose. And, well, but how did, it, how did it make you feel to know that, that, that Harry Potter gave up magic, right? No longer wanted to be part of Hogwarts. And then he handed his wand and, and tossed it over his shoulder like it was trash. What did you think of that scene in particular? Oh, well, I thought it was, um, um, you know, it was different, right? It was, it was a different choice, I suppose. J.K. Rowling, what did you think about the scene uh, when, when Harry Potter was brandishing his wand menacing me over the bed of Hermione's child? What did you think of that scene? But I, I don't know. I mean, he, I usually wrote him to be sort of hopeful and full of life and love for magic and looking at the good of everybody. But um, I suppose this is a different take, I suppose. Wouldn't you call it brave? Yes, I'd call it brave. I guess it's stupid can also be called brave at times. Ah, it was a work of genius, right? Really, he's, he's averted all of your expectations, I suppose. How would you feel if you saw old, grizzled, old uh, Harry Potter in the future, hating on magic, hating on everything from Harry Potter, a coward, uh, runs away from, oh, oh, oh no, a snake, ah! Forgot that he could speak to snakes, guys. Oh, a snake! 
You know, how would you feel if you changed every all of your characters? <laughs> you know, Ron Weasley, how would you feel with, with his death? <laughs> he died at the hands of his son, for no real good reason, really. <laughs> and nobody mourned, right? But really was brave, and I'm pretty sure all the Harry Potter fans out there would love is neither Ron Weasley, Hermione, or Harry Potter were ever seen together on film ever again. They put the movie together, they got all the cast, got everyone all jazzed up, and you never seen the band back together again. No, no. Ron Weasley dies in the first movie, in the second movie, Harry Potter dies. Hermione, you know, flies like Superman out the window. In space. <laughs> How would that make you guys feel? To want something so bad like all of your characters back together on screen for one more hurrah and then to never get that again? Like, if you knew the, the, the movie was done and never gonna come back, it'd be one thing. But to be promised this and to be like teased that it's gonna happen and then get all excited for something and then they don't even give you that. They don't even give you that. Pretty sure you guys love it, right? It's a brave new direction for Harry Potter. He becomes Schmeagle in a nighty. Mazes, hates magic is, I'm Harry Potter's is. I break my wands is. No, I don't think you guys would appreciate that. And I don't wish that upon you, I really don't. I don't wish the Ryan Johnson effect upon any lover of any sort of movie, you know, not, not the Lord of the Rings. I'm killing off Gandalf, just like for good. He's gonna be Gandalf the Black in the, you know, where basically the, the rant where he just rewrites history, screws up all your characters, he make you wish that you never saw it ever again. It makes you hate yourself watching it. RJ effect, guys, so. Which one do you prefer? I prefer the Mandela effect, personally. At least that one seems like some quantum physics sort of thing. Whereas, this just seems like douchebag sort of thing. Anyway guys, please uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Like or subscribe. And yeah, tell me, do you guys, do you guys believe in the Mandela effect? Do you, do you think it's real? Do you believe in the Orion Johnson effect? Because I know that's real. My <laughs> heart knows it's real. And so does my fist. Anyway guys, thanks for watching.